So, Mike Keegan, the man of the takeover, the guy that's giving us all the news on the takeover and the number one source for it, has come out with some news about the bidders being very frustrated with the Glazers delaying time, the del Glazers playing games to try and get more money out of Manchester United. Shock, shock, surprise, 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 who'd have guessed? Also, Fabrizio Romano has come out and confirmed Manchester United's transfer targets. He went on the United Stand today, made some really interesting points about right-back strikers and who United's transfer targets are. And Simon Jones of the Mail did a brilliant report on United, suggesting they could be looking to sign two strikers, Kane on top of Evan Ferguson, selling up to 13 players and the positions they want to go for in the summer so more confirmation on that so let's dive into the takeover news then we're going to get into the transfer news so smash a like smash a subscribe let's get into it so let's get into what mike keegan said on the takeover because it's been like three weeks since the second bids have gone in and the bidders haven't heard anything back we haven't gone into a third round of bidding we haven't heard about if the preferred bid has been picked well, we are meant to find out like literally two weeks ago it was meant to be a quick process why are the glazers delaying it is it because they know they have to sell the club and they can't accept the minority stake but they're not getting the six billion offers that they want for the club. Is it a tactic to drive up the price? Of course it is. But what does Mike Keegan said? Qatar aren't happy about this, so Jim aren't happy about this. This is causing some tensions, this is causing some problems, and this is very unfair on Eric Tenog as well. It was said new, those in the hunt for Manchester United are becoming increasingly frustrated, having not received an update since filling the second bids more than two weeks ago. There are also growing concerns that any buyer may not be in place in time to oversee Manchester United's summer transfer window. The club has been for sale since November. Stop hanging around, Glazers. Ten Hag is doing a brilliant job at United. He's making fantastic progress, but he's going to need a lot of investment in the summer transfer window. And I know you don't care about Ten Hag's progress. I know you don't care about Ten Hag's transfer plans. I know you only care about money, and that is why you're delaying the deal. But you are putting Ten Hag in a poor position because you're making it difficult for Ten Hag to do his job. If you're if he doesn't know what he's got until maybe August when you own his win, we've got a month of a three-month transfer window because you ain't going to do anything because you've got to pay 200 million back in debt. You can't buy anyone. You'd have to sell to spend. So hurry up and get on with the takeover. That's what I have to say to the Glazers. Not that they're going to watch this video or not that they're going to listen to this video, but it's it, it's incredibly unfair on Ten Hag. The, the Glazers are delaying it because they want more money, let's be honest. Um, and, you know, we, yeah, whether we get Qatar, whether we get Sir Jim, the longer and longer it takes, the longer it takes to get them in place, the longer it takes us to get ready for the transfer window. Ten Hag knows who he wants, Man United know who they want, Man United know the, you know the positions they want to go for. But those transfer targets might go. You know, people like, I don't know, Olken Koku, who's a target, you know, he might not want to wait until August for United to buy him because he might have clubs swooping in for him in July. Same with Frimpong. A lot of teams are interested in Frimpong. Teams will swoop in for him June, July. They don't want to wait till August. Manchester United have been in a position in the past, you know, Cody Gakpo this January, he didn't want to wait till the summer, so he went to Liverpool in January, even though he'd preferred United over Liverpool. So what the Glazers are doing by delaying this takeover is putting us in a position where we might not be able to do anything the first month of the transfer window, which means that we could lose out on targets that don't want to wait. That is a possibility. And also, Ten Hag can't take people in pre-season. He's got less time to prepare for them. It puts Ten Hag in a negative position. Ten Hag's made such good progress. He's on such a right tack. He's doing such a good job. Flow into the chance to win. That striker, that midfielder, that right back that he wants. Boom, boom, boom. Progress. But we might not be able to do that. It was said... Um, some feel the delay is down to the Glazer family owners examining ways to drive at the prices. Mike Keegan and, and and come on, pick pick. You know the sky is blue. That that you know Mike Keegan's spot on. They haven't got the six billion they want. Qatar have offered slightly over five billion, a little bit more than Jim Rackham. Jim Rackham's offered five billion. The minority stake offers. Why they're very happy with it. Remember, they know they can't upset that because they'd be idiots. They'd be idiotic to upset that because look at the debt the clubs in. Look at the financial crisis they're in. Look at how much money they can get out of Sheikh Yassim. They know they can get a lot of money at Sheikh Yassim. They know Qatar with a lot of money. They know Sheikh Yassim can offer more money than he has offered. But because Sergio Rackless bid was five billion, Sheikh Yassim's only going to go a little bit over five billion rather than six billion. And as I've said, the Glazers are greedy. They didn't get the bids they wanted. They know they need to sell the club. The Rain Group's confirmed they need to sell the club. They're doing this as a tactic to try and drive up the price and get Qatar to bid more money. I think it's a game. Oh, Qatar are desperate to spend in the summer. Let's delay this so they go hurry up and give us the six billion we want. It's all games to the Glazers. It's all about money. But I do want to talk about the transfer window. I do want to talk about Manchester United's plans in the summer transfer window because Fabrizio Romano went on the United stand today and gave some very interesting updates regarding what Manchester United hopes to do in the summer. And hopefully we can get on with these plans very soon because I'm getting fed up with talking about transfer news in the sense of 
we kind of know who we want and it's interesting to get these stories and it's nice to get updates from Romano but we can't do anything until we get this new ownership situation sorted which is just being delayed 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 someone said that a story is going to break at 10 p.m tonight we'll wait and see if that is the case there'll probably be a live stream video tonight but it was said um, by Romano. Manchester United and Eric Tenard want a striker who has a good level of physicality and that's why Harry Kane is their ideal target. So you've got Romano, The Athletic, every tier one source under the sun. Harry Kane is Manchester United's some, number one summer transfer target. Like Frankie de Jong was last year and Sancho the year before. Harry Kane is Manchester United's number one transfer target. This is the guy we want to pursue. Daniel Levy will make it annoying. This will not be a fun one. I think this will be De Jong's saga 2.0. that's going to stretch across the whole transfer window. However, it was said that Eric Tenag wants to strike a signing in ASAP so he can focus on other positions and not repeat what they did with De Jong last year so they're more ready in pre-season. But with the way the takeover is going and the delays that's going on, I believe that Kane will be very much um, De Jong 2.0. As I said, I do think Kane will be a fantastic signing. I think he'll be very Robin Van Persie. Yes. I think he comes in, boom, 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 scores goals, has an instant impact like Casemiro, like what Van Persie did. The question is, we will be massively overpaying for him. He's not worth over 100 million. He's not worth over 80 million, but that's what United are going to have to pay to get him. Uh, the second story, Romano said, the second player he confirmed we're interested in. Again, we already know we're interested in this guy, but you know when Romano firm confirms it, just make sure you know, really. And it said that Manchester United feel that Jeremy Frimpong adds something new to the current right back op options at the squad. The player himself would be keen on the move. So, boom. Confirming Frimpon wants to move. Boom, saying confirming United wants him. Obviously, been scouting him. He offers something different because I think he'll improve Anthony and Sancho because he's a fullback that bombs forward and very good attacking wise. Can overlap and definitely would bring something good. And the third player we're going to talk about, which is a midfielder that United have been recently linked to by very, very reliable sources, and now we've got Romano on it, is Orkun Koku. And he said Manchester United scouts, along with other teams, are monitoring Feyenoord midfielder Orkun Koku. Um, there aren't any uh, direct negotiations now, says Romano. Um, so again, no negotiations, but Ten Hag's had talks. Man United monitoring, Man United looking at him. But Romano's confirmed Orkun, uh, Frimpong and of course um, Kane are three players United looking at. Striker, midfielder, right back. And then we know that United are interested in the centre-back for Maguire or Lindelof to leave, a potentially goalkeeper and potentially even a second striker. Because we got a good update from Simon Jones of the Mail um, regarding United transfers and United transfer plans. And he said, Brighton are aware of Manchester United's interest in duo Alexis McAllister and Moises Castedo and expect offers from numerous Premier League clubs. So obviously we're looking at the brilliant Feyenoord midfielder, but we're also looking at McAllister and Moises Casado. I think Bellingham and De Jong are kind of deemed unrealistic. So I do think United will be looking at um, Orkin Koku, um, Mo Moises Casado, McAllister, you know, maybe Enzo Lefi, Maxim Kakare, Mateus Nunes, those kind of midfielders, because I think that De Jong and, and Bellingham will be difficult. But the interesting thing that Simon Jones said was this, Manchester United's priority remains a striker, then midfielder, centre-back, right-back, and possibly a goalkeeper. And I think that's the case. It's a big striker like Kane, a big midfielder in, uh, that can play next to, obviously, Casemiro. Then it will be a right-back like Frimpong, and then it will be a centre-back, because one of Maguire and Lindelof, I'm pretty sure, will leave. And that centre-back could be Kim Min Jae, that could be Timba. Also, was it Dassi? What was he called? French centre-back we're looking at. Name is gone. Name is gone from my head. We're also looking at French centre-back as well. So I do think those are very much the ones to keep an eye on. And depending on money left, depending on how it goes, I do think United would start to look at the likes of David Wright and goalkeeping options. Even if it, it might not be a first choice goalkeeper they're looking at, it could just be a backup because Dean Henderson's leaving or it could be a first choice to come in for De Gea, someone that potentially is better with their feet. Not 100% sure what Tenor wants. But another thing that was said as well from Simon Jones of the Mail is that Manchester United are looking to move out 13 players this summer. Um, you know, big clear out. Um, I do think those 13 players that leave will make room for about five to come in. I think that we probably sign five players, but two of them will be smaller signings if we do sell 13 players to balance out the squad. But, you know, we know Tenon wants a big clear out. A lot of players he deems not good enough, obviously. Dean Anderson, Maguire, Juan Bissaka, Tellez, Bailly, Axel Twenzebi, Jones, um, Tomine, Donny, Martial, all those who are rumoured to be leaving United in the summer, potentially on Tenon's list. It was also said Manchester United... Um, it was also said, sorry... Brighton are hopeful of agreeing a new contract with boy wonder Evan Ferguson before the end of the month, despite strong interest from Manchester United at Tottenham, and that United want Evan Ferguson this summer, as well as a more experienced striker. So it was said, you know, Brighton want to get Evan Ferguson down on the new deal, so like, because they know clubs are going to come in for him in the summer. If they get Evan Ferguson on the new deal, 
they can get more money for him. I think if you're Evan Ferguson, you probably want to stay one more year at Brighton because this is your breakthrough season. You don't want to be a one-season wonder. You probably want to spend one more season at Brighton to establish yourself and then next season look for a big move. If I was Evan Ferguson, that's what I would do. Um, but, you know, when you've got United, big teams interested in you, it can be tempting. Um, I think Brighton are confident they'll get him on a new contract. And I do think, you know, Brighton will be asking for an extortionate amount of money for him. And I think, you know, if we get Kane, you know, they'll probably ask for like 70 million for Evan Ferguson and we'd be a massive overpayment. I think that United, you know, I said that they'd like a first choice striker and Evan Ferguson as backup. You know what City had with Julian Alvarez and Erling Haaland. United would probably like that for Kane and Evan Ferguson. Uh, but I do think if, if he signs a new contract at Brighton, pff, it's going to be pricey. Maybe if he doesn't, you can get him on a slightly reduced price. But we also would look at Ramos Hoyland, who could potentially be cheaper. But I wouldn't be surprised if United were in for two strikers. Because I think Tenog, while he likes Martial, Tenog is very frustrated with his injury record. And is like, yeah, I've got to let this brother go. He he keeps getting injured. So, I think Evan Ferguson, Kane wants to watch out for. I still think keep an eye on Carlo Ramos. Romano did speak about Dusan Vlahovic today as well, saying he would be open to a Premier League move. So, look. Striker, midfielder, right back, centre back, maybe a goalkeeper. That's the way it's going. But hopefully the takeover first. Hopefully we get some news coming in soon. You know, we're meant to hit back any day now, but they've been saying that for two weeks. So surely it should be any day now. Smash a like, smash a subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.